Now, when most people think of Land Rover, they think of Range Rover. They think of something that's going to be $100,000 or more, and it's got to be out of their price range. But the fact is, you can get into a Land Rover for as little as $40,000. And what that gets you is this model here, the LR2, the baby of the fleet. So let's have a look at it and see how it measures up to its bigger brothers. Now before we go any further, I have to admit I'm not in the base LR2. I'm in the top of the line HSC Luxury, which starts just a touch over $48,000. And mine has a few more options that brings it to just a little over $52,000. But when you're looking at the various trim lines, it's mostly in just a few of the features. So for example, in the base one, you get body colored door handles. You don't get a backup camera. You don't get memory seats. But everything else is pretty much the same. I'm in the 2014 model, but it was the 2013 that went under the knife when Land Rover carved out the 3.2 liter inline six that the LR2 had and replaced it with the two liter turbo from the Evoque. That gives us 240 horsepower, 250 foot pounds of torque at 1750 RPM, so it scoots. And that's more than the 230 horsepower that you got out of the six, but you get better fuel economy, 12 liters to 100 in the city, 8.4 on the highway. Now the question with any SUV as capable of this one is, does anybody actually take it out and get it dirty? And of course the answer is probably not, but that's not the idea. The whole thing behind Land Rover is the fact that you could if you wanted to. It's got the capability and that's what people want. They want the bragging rights. So when it comes to the competition, we're looking at other vehicles that are equally good on the off-road, but far more likely to spend their time on the asphalt. Vehicles like, say, the Mercedes-Benz GLK, Audi's Q5, BMW's X3, Jeep's Grand Cherokee. Now that's one that does get a little dirtier, but in the higher end, well, you know, that's more about luxury. And then another one that's going to come across this is going to be the new Porsche Macan. Now that we're not going off-road with it, let's take it on the asphalt and see how it handles. And it does it very well. I like the smooth steering response. It's sharp. It responds well to my input. The ride is pliable, which, you know, for something that can do what this does, you'd expect more of a bumpy, lumpy ride, and you're not getting that. You are feeling the luxury for which this brand is known. So what's it like to drive a Land Rover? Well, the first thing I noticed about it is it feels substantial, but it doesn't feel heavy. You've got this impression in the undercarriage and in the steering that this is certainly a cousin to those vehicles that get driven across the sand dunes or that the UN takes into the roughest territory on Earth. And it's all there. It's the real deal but with that luxury that you're going to want for the city and the kind of performance that you expect from a vehicle like this. Now one place where the LR2 might not live up to all expectations is the interior. Not the seats, they're all leather on all trim levels and they're very comfortable, but the dash. It's a little simple, it's a little plain, there's a lot of hard plastic here. You got to understand, if you're going to get this kind of performance and this kind of capability starting under $40,000, you're going to have to make it up somewhere else. But keep in mind, it is going to look a little less than some of its higher priced cousins. And we do have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is Land Rover's reputation for reliability. It is getting better, according to consumer advocate groups, but I would still recommend thinking about an extended warranty if you're buying one of these. Now there are some things I really like. The steering wheel is handsome and it's nicely sized. We have this dual pane sunroof that makes it light and airy in here, no claustrophobia. And the bulges on the hood, well, the idea behind them, Land Rover says, is that when you're driving off road, it gives you a better perspective of where you're going. And I have to admit, it really does. But when I'm looking forward, there's one thing that gets to me. This has a heated windshield, and that's great in our Canadian climate, but it uses these little wires that run vertically in the glass. And if you don't realize they're there, well, it looks clear. And as soon as you realize they are, it's the only thing you can see. 
When it comes to iconic car brands, Land Rover is definitely one. Everybody knows this one. But a lot of them, they're very expensive. They're out of reach for a lot of people. So what about the $40,000 one? Well, it's capable, it's comfortable, it holds five passengers, holds all their luggage, the performance is great, the ride is nice. Yeah, this is an iconic Land Rover too.